What's up y'all? Welcome to Tabletop Bros. This video is the first in my hobby vlog for a 2000 point Warhammer 40k Escalation League. My chosen army is Death Watch Space Marines. The first week starts with 250 points and each week we add an additional 250 points. We're going to be playing games against other people as they do the same and at the end of the 8 weeks we'll have a fully painted 2000 point Warhammer 40,000 army. And you guys know I love to get my hobby and game on so I figured I'd take you along for the ride. So in this video we're getting started with the airbrush. A lot of people are intimidated by an airbrush and I understand how it can be scary. It's a little bit of a financial investment and it's definitely a time investment as well. But the learning curve is super steep in the beginning but once you get the hang of it it's going to make your life so much easier. So I use a cheap compressor off Amazon and I keep it at 30 psi. I also have what you would consider to be like a nice quality beginner airbrush. It's a 3.5 needle and the airbrush is an Iowata Neo. And this is basically the workhorse of airbrushes. It's very consistent, it's not too finicky, and as long as you keep it clean and take good care of it, you're always gonna get consistent and good results. In this video, I'm using a combination of airbrush medium, Citadel paints, and some artist inks. And we're actually only using two different paints and one ink. So we're gonna be getting started with Dark Reaper. I always put a little bit of the airbrush medium in first and spray it out. That way you're never gonna get the airbrush initially clogged up with that thick paint that you're pouring in. I also always mix my paints with the medium right inside the airbrush. So you'll notice I pour in a little bit of the medium first and then I put a little bit of paint afterwards. I put my finger over the tip and then I blow through a little bit of air and it causes to bubble up and mix the paint. Before ever spraying my model, I always test it on my glove or on another surface first to make sure that everything is spraying smooth before I just blast my model. If you just use these basic tips and do them over and over again, you're always going to get good and consistent results. So I have a black prime on these that I did with a rattle can, nothing fancy, regular old Rust-Oleum. And then I'm hitting them with that Dark Reaper. The goal here is to basically leave a little bit of the black all the way down in like the deepest recesses and cracks, but to overall make the models Dark Reaper Gray. So my actual army for this Escalation League, the first week is 250 points, and there's no specific selections required, and we had no idea about the missions or anything like that. So we're kind of going into it blind. So I chose to take Assault Intercessors with Jump Packs, the leader of the squad has a power fist and plasma pistol, and then one other member has a plasma pistol as well. This is nice because I have a combination of speed, I get a bunch of attacks between the squad, I can deal with some heavily armored targets and do multiple wounds if I need to, and with two wounds apiece and a three up armor save, they're relatively durable. So this squad of five clocks in at 85 points and a little under 35% of my army. You'll notice here also that I actually have a couple of character models that I'm spraying as well. They're not part of my initial army, but I know I want to add them in eventually, and I figure while I had the airbrush out, I might as well give them a blast as well. So my second unit, taking up the majority of my army at 160 points, is the Gladiator Lancer. This thing is super durable with toughness 10, 3 up save, and 12 wounds. It has a movement of 10, it's OC3 in case I gotta park it on an objective, but the real strength of this thing is the Lancer Laser Destroyer. It's heavy, 72 inch range, 2 shots, it hits on 3s at strength 14, minus 4 AP, and a D6 plus 3 damage. I also have a combination of Fragstorm Grenade Launchers and Icarus Rocket Pod, as well as an Iron Hail Heavy Stubber, so I can deal with some infantry as well, and dish out a decent amount of firepower. The cool thing about the Gladiator Lancer, not only does it have this super powerful gun, but it also has the Aquilin Optics, which means each time this model is selected to shoot, you can reroll one hit roll, you can reroll one wound roll, and you can reroll one damage roll when resolving those attacks. So even though the main gun is only two shots, it's going to be super consistent because I can reroll one hit, one wound, and one damage each time it shoots. So while we continue to go over the army, you'll notice that I've switched over to Mechanicus Standard Gray, and this is the second of our colors. So we started with the Black Prime, we hit the majority of the panels with Dark Reaper, and now we're using Mechanicus Standard Gray. And I basically just mixed it in with a little bit of Dark Reaper that I had left in the airbrush. So I'm going through here and I'm just hitting a little bit less of each panel and I'm trying to focus on like the bottoms of the panels 
so it gives a sort of like reverse zenithal effect. So I'm still lightening up the majority of the tank like higher up and more exposed to the light. The way you would naturally see lighting take place. But rather than just blasting the top of every panel on like the big vertical panels, I try to get the lighter parts at the bottom. This tends to draw your eye away from where the actual natural light is hitting them and makes it much more clear that you've done an airbrush with various colors and it's not just the natural lighting giving you this effect. So back to the Death Watch rules. So all Space Marines have the Oath of Moment ability, which is pretty cool, especially in smaller games, but it's still powerful once you get up to 2,000 points. So Oath of Moment, if your faction is Adeptus Astartes, at the start of your command phase, select one unit from your opponent's army. Until the start of the next command phase, that enemy unit is your Oath of Moment target. Each time a model with this ability makes an attack that targets your Oath of Moment target, you can reroll the hit roll. So basically, at the beginning of each of my turns, I select one unit in my opponent's army, and all my models reroll all of their hits against it. And that's shooting, combat, even Overwatch. So it's very powerful, especially in small games when most people are only gonna have like one, two, or even three units. So I'm basically gonna pick one target of my opponents and just try to focus everything on removing that from the game. On top of that, Death Watch had some restrictions but didn't really apply here. And then they have their mission tactics rule. And that's the Death Watch special like army rule for the Black Spear Task Force Detachment. And essentially what this is, at the start of my command phase, I select one of my mission tactics out of three, and until the start of the next command phase, the mission tactic is active, and its effects apply to all units from my army with this ability. Each mission tactic can only be used once per battle. You can pick one each turn, but you only have three of them to choose from for the whole game. So in a normal five turn game, you're going to have two turns where you don't get one at all, so you want to make sure that you're picking good stuff. So the first one is Fuhrer Tactics. And this was by far my favorite. While this mission tactic is active, weapons equipped by Adeptus Astartes units from your army have sustain hits one ability. So that means every time I score a six to hit, I get an additional hit. And that's not just shooting, it's combat as well. So when you couple that with the Oath of Moment army rule and all those rerolls, I'm gonna get a lot of sixes. And spoiler alert, we already played our games and this worked really well. The second one is the Malleus tactic. With this mission tactic active, while this mission tactic is active, weapons equipped by Adeptus Astartes units from your army have the lethal hits ability. This one played out pretty nice as well. It just means that when I score those sixes to hit, instead of getting an additional hit, that hit just automatically wounds. So naturally, this is gonna be best against tougher targets. And I ended up playing against Tyranids and they had a couple models with toughness six. So again, this played out really well for most of my bolt weapons, which were only strength four. And then the final of the mission tactics, which I actually didn't end up using, was Purgatus Tactics. While this mission tactic is active, each time an Adeptus Astartes unit from your army makes an attack, if a critical hit is scored, that attack has the precision ability. And that just means that if I score a critical hit on a 6, then I can potentially target characters inside of a unit, which could definitely be useful at times for trying to snipe a character, but it didn't really apply in our games. So that's my army, those are my faction and detachment rules, and we ended up playing a special mission in week 1, called the race. The goal here was to focus on movement and essentially one player had to get from their edge of the board off the other end of the board with at least half of their points while the other player tried to stop them. And then after we completed the game, we switched sides and then just did the exact same thing again, but reversed. So I ended up playing against Tyranids. So his army was one Lictor, five Gene Stealers and an attached Broodlord. So each had two units. And spoiler alert, both games were really fun, but I did end up winning both of them. You'll notice that I pulled out my artist ink and I put about 10 drops in to my existing airbrush Mechanicus Standard Gray that has a little bit of that Dark Reaper left in there. And now I'm just going through and doing like a targeted Zenithal highlight. You'll also notice that now when I'm spraying this, I'm spraying a little bit closer to the models. So I'm a little more accurate with it. But the goal here is to just lighten up all the panels that would be exposed to like the natural lighting and give us a nice contrast from the black all the way down in the cracks, the Dark Reaper, and then the Mechanicus Standard Gray, all the way up to our lightened version of the color. And then we can add in the rest of our colors and potentially edge highlights when we want. But in the meantime, we'll have a nice gradient with Airbrush. In the first game, he had a redeploy ability and basically repositioned all his units so that I couldn't even get a shot on him until the second turn. And by then he was only a few inches away from my board edge, almost winning. He got first turn, so I had to advance with everything just to get into position to potentially try and stop him on the second turn. I ended up unleashing a ton of fire into his Gene Stealers and Broodlord, 
and then charging into combat with my tank. I got really lucky on the tank shock roll and did six mortal wounds to his broodlord, getting the kill. Which is pretty insane because I was rolling extremely bad. So it was nuts to completely spike the tank shock roll and do max mortal wounds and just enough to kill him. So that basically gave me the W, but not before I shot both my plasma pistols at the Lictor, missed, and both models failed their hazardous roll and died. The second game, I screened out my tank with the Assault Intercessors, got first turn, and completely unloaded on the Broodlord squad again. I got him down to only a single wound remaining, after charging into combat with the Assault Intercessors, and he killed all of them but the Sergeant. He ended up leaving combat to try to get to my tank. I overwatched and was able to get a lucky hit and get the kill. It was really fun and I'm definitely looking forward to next week, which is 500 points. We don't know what the mission is, but it's named Call Your Shot. So as you can see, the airbrushing is going quite well. We've got a nice gradient between our dark colors all the way up to the lightest ones. And while it can be a little intimidating at first, it's definitely worth taking the time learning how to airbrush and spending the small upfront investment to get a setup. I picked up a compressor with a small tank on Amazon for under 200 bucks and I got the Iwata Neo airbrush for like 65. I ended up buying a couple other small accessories as well, but when it was all said and done, I had a full setup for under $250. Now I've been using the airbrush for a few years now and I've logged a lot more time than most. So I don't wanna give you an unrealistic expectation as to what's gonna happen when you bust this thing out of the box. But the fact of the matter is, if you take a little time and invest a little money up front, especially if you're going to be in this hobby for years to come, the time and money you invest initially is going to pay for itself exponentially over the next few years. And in the end, it's going to be the best decision you ever made, at least in my opinion. One of my favorite channels I like to watch is The Painting Phase. They do some really cool podcasts, and the guys on there have some great personalities. But they recently did a video about airbrushes. And they had a bunch of like fancy expensive airbrushes and spoiler alert the video was a complete disaster he ended up spending like an entire day airbrushing everything came out horribly the thing was clogged up non-stop and by the time the first day ended he was stripping his models ended up coming back in for a second day and trying it again and got some decent results but i think when it was all said and done he spent like two entire days trying to airbrush ended up having to strip all of the terminators and then ended up with one model that was completed and I know if I didn't have personal first-hand experience with an airbrush, that's the type of thing that would probably scare me away. But I don't think that's a realistic expectation of what's going to happen. One, he was using expensive fancy airbrushes with finer needles, so they're going to get clogged up a lot more often. And if you don't take proper care to thin your paints to the correct consistency, clean your airbrush on a regular basis, and other just basic techniques that you learn over time, you're probably going to have a similar nightmare experience, but most people aren't going to jump in with like fine needle airbrushes and then film the whole disaster because I'm sure he had some unrealistic expectations going into that video and then the extra frustration of filming it and everything going wrong. When I first picked up my airbrush setup, I didn't even start off by painting models. I literally took out a couple of boxes and just kind of like traced around some lines, practiced actually shooting out the paint, moving my airbrush closer and further away from what I was spraying. I messed around with the actual pressure on the compressor and then practiced taking it apart, cleaning it out, putting it back together I experimented with having my paint too thin or not thin enough and by just spending a couple of hours initially getting familiar with my airbrush it made the whole journey a lot less painless and a lot more fun but i also don't want you to think that this is the first time i'm picking up my airbrush and you're going to get these results without putting in a little bit of time effort and practice so as you can see after finishing up the airbrush i went through with some silver some red and a bit of gold added a little color to the army and just did some simple basing with some plastic scraps, a little sand, skulls and tufts. And then I did a nice smooth Abaddon black rim. I'm really happy with how the models look and it was super fun getting to play some games with a small army. I'm really excited about the Escalation League. I absolutely love them because everybody gets used to their models as they build up to the bigger games, more familiar with their rules. And by the time you're playing 2000 points, you're pretty familiar with all of your different units and the games go much more smoothly. So if you enjoyed today's video and you want to come along for the ride, I'd absolutely love to earn your subscription. So stay tuned next week to see what I add to the Death Watch Army and how my game goes. That's it from the Tabletop Bros. Later!